Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the HSL Color tab that's found in the Develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. With the HSL Color tab, you could adjust three different attributes of several different colors. The colors that you could adjust those attributes for are red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. And the three attributes that you could adjust are hue, saturation, and luminance. And the default view for the HSL color tab is like this. We have all the different color sliders, but then we have three sub tabs up above. We have U, so each of these sliders will adjust U. Then we could click on saturation and each of these sliders will adjust the saturation of that specific color. And then we have luminance and each of those sliders could then adjust the luminance of those specific colors. And by default, this is what the HSL color tab will look like. And in a minute, I'll show you some other different looks or different configurations you could use with this tab. For this demonstration, we're going to be adjusting the different attributes and colors of this image. And for this image, I already did some basic panel adjustments and I did a tone curve adjustment where I just added some strong contrast. And we covered the tone curve in our last video. And if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch that video and you'll learn all the ins and outs of the tone curve. Now, of course, to adjust color in an image, we could go to the basic tab. And there are two sliders here that control color, vibrance and saturation. And we can move like saturation up and make it more saturated or down and make it less saturated. But those, of course, are global adjustments. They're adjusting every single color in the image. The advantage of using the HSL color tab is we could really pinpoint specific colors and adjust those three attributes, use saturation and luminance, of those colors exclusively of the other colors. For example, in this image, the sky is blue, thankfully. Well, we could come in and it's a little light. Maybe I want to make the luminance value of the blue a little darker. And when we talk about luminance, we're talking about the brightness of a specific color. So I could go to this luminance sub tab, go to the blue slider, and I could pull it down and I'm making the blue sky darker. So in effect, I'm kind of like I had a circular polarizer on my lens. So I could pull that down and make it darker. Now there may be a case where it's too dark and you want to make it lighter and you could push it to the right. So you really could pinpoint that specific color. And of course, there's a lot of different colors in this image, and we could adjust hue, saturation, and luminance of all those colors. There may be sometimes false color in an image. Sometimes the light is just a specific way in an image, and the white balance and sensor in your camera misinterpret everything a little bit, and one color is slightly off, and you could correct it with the U. So if, for instance, the yellows didn't look quite right in this image. I could come in here, click on the hue sub tab, go to the yellow uh, slider and adjust that to try to color correct the yellows. On the other hand, there may be an instance where you want to give your image kind of a surreal look or a false color look, some fantasy look. So you could come in here and do that with the hue tab. Maybe I want to make the blue sky maybe more magenta so I could move the blue to the right and start pushing it more a little more towards magenta or purple or I could push it to the left and make it a little more cyan or gray so I could move this the sliders to kind of give a false color look to the image if that's what you want but more often we use these sliders for the saturation and luminance of the colors and in this case with this image there's some yellows and greens and blues, so I could come in here and go to the saturation tab. And if I feel maybe my yellows are just a little bit too saturated, I could come in here with this yellow slider under the saturation sub tab and pull it down a little bit. So I could suck a little bit of the color out of the yellows and make it look a little more balanced. 
Then on the other hand, as I mentioned, I could go to this luminance tab and I could come up and make that blue sky a little darker. Maybe I want to uh, make the greens in the image a little darker as well to kind of separate out the yellow that is down here. So it's making the green a little darker, but the yellow looks a little brighter because I'm making the green darker. So there's different things you could do to kind of add depth to your image. And that's where I most often use this tab. I use it to add depth. I often will make the yellows a little brighter and the greens a little darker to add a little more depth in kind of a uniform field of grass and trees. And it kind of gives a little more depth to the image. When I do that, I often use this tab also to adjust the sky. I like my skies just a little darker sometimes. So I'll pull the luminance value of blue down. Now, if you're adjusting these sliders and you need to get them back to their default zero position, you can, of course, just double click on any one of the sliders and you'll adjust that single slider. Double click on the name and you'll adjust that single slider to zero. Another way to do it is double click on the name of the sub tab you're in, right here where it says luminance. If I double click on that, I'll readjust all the sliders under the luminance sub tab. Now, if I go to saturation, it didn't readjust those. So I could double click on saturation. Let's say we had more than one adjusted here. I could double click on saturation and it will readjust them like that. Then similarly for you, let's say I had a bunch of hue sliders moved around. I could double click on the word hue. Another way to do it is hold the alt or option key. It's the alt key if you have a, a Windows computer and option if you have a Mac. And when you do it, it says reset you. See how it changes when I press the key in? And then I could just single click on that reset hue kind of button and it resets it. So that's different ways you could reset all the different sliders. Now I mentioned there were different views. Uh, we're looking at this default view. Another view is if I click on all right here and you could see then that I have U, saturation, and luminance instead of being in individual tabs, they're laid out one right after the other like this. So I could come in here and I could just do the hues of specific colors, the saturation of specific colors, and the luminance values of such certain colors. It does the exact same thing as the default view. It's just laid out a little bit differently. And again, the default view is like this. Now another view, a third kind of view of this tab is right here. You could see it says HSL. And then if I click there, color, now you'll see it's laid out with the individual colors being broken up into the three attributes for each of the colors. So we have red and we have U saturation lumens for red and similarly for orange, yellow, and so on. So you could come in here and just work on one specific color without having to switch between the different tabs to affect those three attributes. So use whatever uh, layout you prefer, whichever works best for you, it doesn't really matter. Now there's a couple more things you could do with this tab. First are targeted adjustments. And you may remember that we talked about targeted adjustments with the tone curve. They're available by click clicking on this little donut looking thing up here in the top left hand corner. And you may have noticed in the HSL color tab, that little donut thing is there as well. So when you're in this default view, you could click on this little donut thing to adjust the attribute that is active. Right now, hue is active, but I don't really want to adjust any of the hues of the image, but I do want to adjust that sky. So I'll go to the luminance tab. I will click on this little donut thing and you could see my cursor turns into that. I have a little set of crosshairs and I have a little circle with a triangle on top and a triangle on the bottom. And what that is implying or, you know, kind of saying you could do is you could drag up with your mouse or down with your mouse to adjust the pertinent color that you're clicking on. For example, I'll go over this blue sky. I'm going to click with my left mouse button. And when I do, the unfortunately, the cursor disappears. And you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I will do my best to describe it. 
I'm clicking with my left mouse button, the cursor disappeared. I'm now pushing my mouse straight up. And you can see when I'm pushing my mouse straight up, look at that blue uh, slider. It's moving straight up. If I drag my mouse down, it's pulling it down. So you could target a color. Now with blue, in this case, it was really just blue. So it really just moved that blue slider. The advantage of using the targeted adjustment is when you have a mishmash of colors, for lack of a better way to put it. For example, if I go down here in these grasses and I click with my left mouse button and I drag down, you'll notice uh, two different sliders are moving. The orange slider and the yellow slider are moving. And curiously, the green slider isn't moving at all, even though that is grass. So that is adjusting the luminance value of orange and yellow in the correct proportion. Notice the orange is moving more so than the yellow. So you could come in here and you could say, well, let me reset this by double clicking on luminance. I could say, wow, that you know, grass really looks bright. I want to tone it down. I could get the targeted adjustment, go to the luminance tab, get the targeted adjustment, click on the grass, and I want to tone it down. So I'm going to pull my mouse downwards. And you can see now wherever I click, the yellow is moving a little more than the orange. So you could kind of tone down where you want to tone down with that luminance tab and targeted adjustments. I could then go up to the sky, click with the left mouse button and drag down, and I'm bringing the luminance value of the sky down. Then maybe I want to adjust saturation. I'll go to the saturation tab. I still have the tool active, and I'll click on something that's very yellow uh, in the image over here. And I want to make the yellows brighter. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button and push up. And you can see how yellow is moving and nothing else is moving, just the yellows. So I've kind of increased the saturation of yellow and I've decreased the saturation of orange, yellow, and blue just by using targeted adjustments. So that's um, a really handy tool to use and in my opinion, an underutilized tool. I don't see a lot of photographers using targeted adjustments. And you can see there's uh, the before and there's the after. So you can see I really affected a great part of the image. Now I'm going to reset these by holding that Alt or Option key in this time and just clicking on Reset Luminance, Reset Saturation, and we didn't do anything with you. Now, the other thing that you could do with the HSL Color tab is what they call black and white balance. And to do that, you need a black and white image. And to get a black and white image, you remember from when we covered the basic tab, we'll click on the basic tab and click right here where it says black and white. And when you do that, of course, the image turns black and white. But if you look down where the HSL color tab was, it's now a B and W tab. And if we open that up, you can see it says black and white mix. And there's no sub tab other than that black and white mix. That's the only thing. And with this, we could affect the luminance values of the colors that were in that color image. So, for example, that sky was blue. I could go to this blue slider and pull it down, and it's just going to make the sky darker because those were the blues in this image. And so I could do that. Now, to reset anyone, I could double click on the name. There is an auto adjustment right here. If I click on Auto, it'll give you what Lightroom considers to be an, uh, kind of an automatic black and white mix for your scene. Typically, I don't like those at all. So I could double click on the name black and white mix and I'll reset everything back to its default position. I like to do it myself. And you can use targeted adjustments here as well. So I could go up to this little donut thing, click on it, make it active, click on this blue sky, and drag down. Now I say blue sky, obviously it's black and white, but I know in the color image blue was there. I also know in the color image that this green is green up in here. So I could click there and I want to make that even darker. So I'm kind of making the, the darker greens darker. And you could see as I pull down, the green is moving down more so than the yellow. Yellow just a little. But then I could come in here and target something that I know is yellow, like right here, and push up. And I'm kind of bringing that yellow back up. 
So I'm adding a little depth. That's what I mean when I say I add depth to an image with this HSL color slash B&W tab is <clears throat> I tend to make the luminance values of one color darker while making the luminance values of a color that's usually nearby, like yellow on green, uh, lighter. So I'll make one lighter and one darker, and that adds a little more depth to the image. And in this case, I made everything that was a darker green even darker, and anything that was yellow, which of course is brighter than green, lighter, even lighter. And that added some depth to my image, in my opinion. There's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. So that, in my opinion, is pretty much everything you need to know about this HSL Color B&W tab. And uh, hopefully, it will help you better uh, adjust the colors in your image to add a little more dynamic depth to your image and a little more, um, a little more interest uh, because it's much more powerful to adjust a single color than it is to just use the basic tab and turn saturation all the way up or, or not all the way up, but turn saturation up or something like that. It's much more effective to do those colors individually. So that's it. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.